we then ask them to taste from these various beverages and rate them in different sensory qualities, how sweet it was, how dry, how much they liked it, etc. What we were really interested in, though, was how much would they choose to drink. <laughs> what you can see is that on the low dopamine day, they chose to drink significantly less. We've actually had a lot of trouble replicating that finding when we start to test people with more extensive histories of substance use. Where we do see effects, though, is if we make them work for it. This is based on a paradigm commonly used in the animal literature called the progressive ratio breakpoint paradigm. In essence, you have to work successively harder and harder and harder to receive consequent uh, units of your uh, preferred of the reward that you're, that you're working for. In this case, successive units of their preferred alcoholic beverage. You literally have to press a button for its dozens and then hundreds and then thousands of times to get successive units of, of the beverage. When we make people work for the drug in this way, then again we see, even in quite heavy uh, substance users, decreases in self-administration behavior. Very recently, we've replicated this same finding when people are working for mini cigarettes. That is, we take a cigarette, cut it up into 10 different pieces, and they, again, they have to work in this same task to get successive units of, uh, 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 of the cigarette. This not only extends the finding to tobacco, but in this study, we went to the extra effort of recruiting three different groups of smokers at different stages of addiction. That included a group that had only started smoking in the last 12 months and were only smoking a couple of cigarettes a day. There was a group of what we might call stable chippers. That is, people who only smoked a couple of cigarettes a day but had stabilized at that level for quite some years. And then what we might consider more typical hardcore dependent smokers who were smoking at least a half a pack a day for many years. The same effect was seen in all three groups, though, lowering dopamine transmission decrease their willingness to work, to sustain interest, to sustain effort, to obtain successive units of, the, of, of tobacco, suggesting that whatever might be happening to the dopamine system following repeated drug use, the actual role, the functional significance of the dopamine signal remains the same, still influencing the motivation to go and get more of the drug. We often talk about these sort of findings in terms of the perceived value of the drug, how much is it worth it to you. And so very recently, we decided to test this notion really most explicitly. And here we asked people to work again in this progressive ratio task for successive $5 bills. What we found is that sure enough, you put them into the low dopamine state and they're less willing to work for money. Emphasizing again that in this low dopamine state, people are less willing to sustain effort to obtain a reward, less when you find the, uh, perhaps of less value. I mean, you'll note there are two different uh, conditions here, and that's another story, the important point being really just that the same effect was replicated in both conditions. The next question of interest is, well, if what, if what dopamine is doing is influencing the perceived value, the willingness to work and sustain motivated effort to obtain a particular reward, might these drug-induced dopamine effects change following repeated drug exposure? We've been particularly interested in the possibility that repeated drug exposure might produce this phenomenon called sensitization. In the animal literature, it's known that repeated drug exposure produces a progressive increase in both the activating, behaviorally activating effects, as well as changes in neurochemistry. It's been quite controversial, though, whether sensitization actually occurs in humans. This has reflected two main observations. First, initial attempts to demonstrate drug-induced behavioral sensitization in humans were unsuccessful. Secondly, once it became possible to measure stimulated dopamine release in human brain, those individuals with the most extensive lifetime histories of stimulant drug exposure showed, if anything, marked decreases in stimulated drug, use, uh, drug release. More recently, though, it's become clear that drug-induced behavioral sensitization can indeed incur in humans. There are two main differences that seem to distinguish the positive from the negative findings. The first has to do with dose. 
whereas the two initial negative studies um, gave only 5 or 10 milligrams, really quite relatively low doses of amphetamine, five of the six successful experiments gave at least 20 milligrams of amphetamine. The second main feature that seems to distinguish the positive from the negative findings is the dependent measure used. And perhaps this isn't just surprising. What we obtain depends on what we're looking at. The most consistent sensitizing effect is on a sense of energetic vigor. The next question of interest is whether we could see evidence that repeated drug exposure might produce sensitization of the dopamine system. To address this question, we recruited a group of carefully screened healthy controls and put them on a repeated amphetamine regimen. The top panel shown here depicts the effect of the initial dose of amphetamine. What you're seeing here is what we might now call a prototypical initial drug response, increases in dopamine release occurring in bilateral ventral striatum. These participants then received additional doses on an every other day regimen. There is then a two week break, at which point they came back to the PET unit and were given a fourth dose of amphetamine. What you can see as depicted, or I hope you can see based on uh, if it's a light, but uh, you should be able to pull, pick out that there's a brighter blue color in the, the relevant area. This corresponds to a significantly greater drug-induced dopamine response in uh, following the fourth administration of amphetamine as compared to the first. In essence, providing the first evidence of drug-induced dopamine sensitization in human brain. Another one of the uh, uh, phenomena commonly seen in animal studies of sensitization is that these effects are remarkably long-lasting, uh, uh, continuing to appear for months, even as long as a full year after the drug dose in laboratory models. To assess whether these, this dopamine sensitization was also enduring in our human subjects, we brought them back to the laboratory a full year after their last amphetamine exposure and administered a fifth dose of amphetamine. What you can see by the brighter colors yet again is that not only was the dopamine sensitization effect still there, but in fact was even larger yet again, both quantitatively larger and qualitatively larger in the sense of expanding now to more dorsal regions of the striatum, those aspects of striatum that have been implicated in the development of stimulus response, habit-like behaviors. Another type of phenomenon that's been seen in the animal literature following repeated drug exposure is that it can not only sensitizes the response to the drug itself, but can enhance, increase the um, dopamine response to other motivationally relevant stimuli, including things like aversive stressors. To test whether this too might occur in humans, we uh, recruited another group of healthy controls and then either exposed them to a repeat amphetamine or a repeat placebo regimen. In the, in the figure shown here now, before, these, uh, before the placebo regimen, they received a, a, labor a standard laboratory stressor. Then following the repeat placebo, they were again exposed to this stressor. And what you're seeing there is, in essence, no measurable dopamine response to this stressor. In comparison, in a second group of subjects who received these same two stressors, but in the interim had been given the repeat amphetamine regimen, they now show an increased stress-induced dopamine response. That is evidence of cross-sensitization between drugs and stress, the prior exposure to the drugs increasing the dopamine response to a, a psychological stressor. A third phenomenon commonly seen in the laboratory is that repeated drug exposure can result in the environmental cues that have been paired with the drug becoming able to elicit many of the same behavioral and neurochemical responses as the drug itself. To test the possibility that we might see what's called a conditioned dopamine response in humans, we again put people through a repeated drug exposure regimen. On the top panel, this shows the individual's response to the first dose of amphetamine. Again, very similar to what we've seen in our previous studies. 